Hey everyone, this is Lee from the 3D Modeler and welcome back to my channel. First of all, I would like to thank you all for your support. I really do appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed yet to our channel, please don't forget to click the subscribe button. Today, I will show you how to create a sailing ship hull using ship planes in 3ds Max. So, let's get started. Now, we are in 3ds Max and I will start by importing my reference image of the ship plane into 3ds Max. So, I will start by selecting any viewport, press Alt W to enlarge this viewport. Then press F to go to the front view and from the shape panel, I will start creating a new rectangular spline with any dimension like this. Then, right click and convert to editable poly. Then press F3 to exit the wireframe mode. And this is how you can create a plane using rectangular spline in 3ds Max. Now, I will open the material editor and start creating a new V-Ray material. In the diffusion slot, I will add a bitmap. And in the bitmap, I will select the file of our reference image and press open. Now I will assign the material to our plane. To show the texture of the material on the plane in the viewport, I will press this button here. But as you can see, nothing happened. And this is because we still need to add a UVW map modifier to our plane. So from the modify panel, I will add a UVW map modifier to our plane. By default, the type of mapping applied by the modifier is a planner mapping. And as you can see, our reference image start to appear on our plane. But it is stretched and deformed. To solve this problem, we will go to the alignment section in the menu of the modifier and press bitmap fit. Then I will select the file of our reference image and press open. Now the dimension of the planner mapping is proportional to the dimension of our reference image, but we still need to adjust the dimension of our plane. So we'll go to the to editable poly and to show the effect of the UVW map modifier while editing our plane, I will press this button here, which is show end result. Then I will select by edges and start adjusting the dimension of our plane so it fits our reference image like this and this is how you can import any reference image into 3ds max now after we have imported our reference image of the ship plane into 3ds max we need to adjust the scale of the image to be in scale with the sailing ship which we will be modeling. And since the sailing ship we are going to model has an extreme breadth, also called ship beam of 16.4 meters, then I will adjust the size of the image according to this measure. So let's talk a little bit about our reference image. This reference image is called the ship plane. This part of the ship plane is called the body plane. The distance from this point to this point is the ship beam. And as mentioned, I want the ship beam to be 16.4 meter. To do so, I will start by creating a rectangular spline like this. Then I will start adjusting the position of the rectangle so that its pivot align with the center line of the body plane like this. Then I will start editing the dimension of the rectangle so that its width becomes 16.4 meter, which is 1640 centimeter, and I will go with any length say 10 meter, which is 1000 centimeter, like this. Then I will select my reference image and I will start editing the position of its pivot. I will move its pivot like this until it's also aligns with the center line of the body plane like this now i will start scaling up our reference image like this until the width of the body plane matches the width of our 
rectangle like this. Now, the distance from this point to this point, which is the shape B, is equal to the width of our rectangle, which is 16.4 meter. And this is the length of the ship beam we are looking for. Now I can delete my reference rectangle like this. And this is how you can scale your reference image to match the scale of the object you are going to model in 3ds Max. Now we are ready to begin the modeling process of the hull. And I will start by tracing the, these lines of the body plane. These lines, when connected together, they will form the main section of the hull's frame, as shown in figure. So, I will start by tracing our first line from the shape panel, select line, and start creating a new line. By default, the type of vertex created while creating a new line is a corner vertex. And by the way, I am moving the camera with the cursor using the shortcut I. Almost done. And here we are, we have finished the first stage of tracing our line. Now we'll start the second stage, which is refining the curvature of the created line. So go to vertex mode, select each vertex, convert it from corner to bezier, and start adjusting the position of the arms of the bezier like this. So that the curvature of the created line follow the curvature of the traced line. Same process, select the vertex, right click, convert from corner to bezier, and adjust the arms of the bezier. By the way, I like to be very precise at this stage of modeling because this will ease a lot the next modeling stages. Same process, select the vertex, right click, convert from corner to bezier, then start adjusting the arms of the bezier until the curvature of the created line follow the curvature of the traced line. Almost done. And here we have finished tracing our first line. Now I will start tracing the next line. Also from the shape panel, start creating a new line. The vertex I am creating while creating my new line, I am sure that it is corresponding to a vertex I have created in the previous line. So, when I create a new vertex in the new created line, I am sure that this vertex is corresponding to a vertex in the line I have created. And by doing so, this will ease the process of connecting those lines to form the hull's frame. Now, I will complete tracing all the lines of the body plan off camera and I will be back soon. Now I have finished tracing all the lines of the body plane. 
Now I will select all the lines, Ctrl V to copy them, Alt Q to isolate the copied lines. Then I will select any one of them and I will start attaching all the copied lines together. I am doing so because I want to show you the flow of the vertices along the created lines. Now, after finish attaching all the lines together, go to vertex mode. And as you can see, by organizing the position of the vertices during the creation of the line, this will result in a uniform flow of vertices along all the lines. And by doing so, this will ease the process of connecting those lines to form the frame of the hull. Now, I will delete our copied lines and back to the line we have traced. Now, I will start by arranging these lines of the body plane so that each line is placed in its correct position in the ship hull. First, let me disable the grid line by pressing shortcut G. And as you can see in our reference image, this is the ship hull. Each vertical line in the ship hull represents a line in the body plane. This group of lines in the body plane represent the group of vertical lines in the front side of the ship, while this group of lines of the body plane represent the group of vertical lines in the back side of the ship. Now, before start moving our lines, I want to freeze my reference image. So I will go to the top view by pressing T, move it backward, back to front view by pressing F, right click, object properties, then enable freeze. By default, show frozen in gray will be enabled. Just disable it and press OK. Now our reference image is frozen. Now I will start selecting our first line, shift drag to make an instance, then rotate it 90 degrees and move it in place of the first vertical line like this. Then the second line, shift drag to make an instance, press OK. Rotate it 90 degrees like this. Then move it into place of the second vertical line like this. And so on. Until all the lines of the body plane are placed in their correct positions in the ship hall. I will do so off camera and I will be back soon. Now I have finished arranging all the lines of the body plane into their correct position in the ship hall. Now I will go to the left view by pressing shortcut L. And here we have all the lines of the body plane. Now I want to align the ends of all the lines of the body plane to a reference point. And I will do so by first enabling Snap to Vertex by pressing this button here or by pressing shortcut S. Then I will start creating a reference rectangle and I will snap its corner with one of the ends. Then I will select one of the lines and I will lock the direction of the movement to the X axis. Then I will grab the end of the line and snap it to our reference point. Same process to all of the lines. Select the line, grab its end until it is snapped with our reference point. This reference point will be the keel of the ship. Still a couple more to go. Oh. 
almost done. If I zoom in here, there is a group of lines need to move upward. And now I have aligned the ends of all the line to our reference point. Now I can delete my reference rectangle. Then I will go to the perspective view by pressing shortcut P. And as you can see, the outline of the shape of the chip frame starts to appear. Back to the front view. Now I have finished arranging all the lines of the body plan into their correct position in the ship hull. Except for this last one. And this is because, as you can see in the figure of the ship hull, all the lines representing the lines of the body plane are vertical lines, except for this last one. This last line is not a vertical line, but it is inclined. So, now I will select my last line and shift drag it to make an instance. Press OK. Then, I will rotate it, but instead of rotating it 90 degrees, I will rotate it 75 degrees. Then, when I move it into position, as you can see, it is perfectly aligned with the inclined line drawn in the figure of the ship. And now I can see I have completely finished arranging all the lines of the body plan into their correct position in the ship. So let's talk a little bit about our reference image. As mentioned before, our reference image is called the ship plan. This part of the ship plan can be considered as the top view of the ship. Although every solid line, every vertical solid line in the top view represent a line of the body plan. Although all the lines representing the body plan are vertical except for the last one which is also inclined. Now I want to check that all the lines of the body plan align with the line representing them in the top view. And to do so, I will unfreeze my reference image, right click unfreeze all. Then I will select my reference image and shift rotate it 90 degrees to make a copy. Then I will go to the top view, exit the wireframe mode by pressing F3 and disable the grid by pressing G. Now I will start adjusting the position of our reference image so that all the ends of the body plane lines are aligned with this horizontal line like this. Now as you can see all the lines of the body plane are aligned with the vertical lines representing them in the top view. Also the last one which is inclined is also aligned with the inclined line in the top view. Now back to the front view by pressing F and this is the end of part 1. In part 1 we learned how to import our reference image into 3ds Max, how to scale our reference image to match the scale of the ship we are going to model. We learned about the ship plan, the main parts of the ship plan, we also traced all the lines of the body plan and we placed all the lines of the body plane into their correct position in the ship hall. In part 2, we'll start by connecting these lines to form the main section of the ship hall frame. So, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, show some love by liking our video, and stay tuned. See you in part 2.